Really tired all of a sudden for some reason. I'm just doing this with some animes.
I don't usually make the music very loud. I try to make it so that if I have to say something, my music is significantly, like, my voice is significantly over the music, but I don't know. It's hard to tell with audio on these things. I know that sounds better.
Ah, uh, hello. Hope you're doing good tonight, today. Every time of day it is for you. I'm working on some line art.
hunk. Hope you're doing good tonight. I'm currently wondering how I managed to make this character's legs look wrong. I'm trying to fix it. I think I made them a little bit too short. I think that was it, okay. Sometimes they just draw the legs all wrong and you gotta fix them. Get the hell out of here. Got a 
leg it out of, just leg it the hell out of some bad legs and into some good legs. I gotta open up my Corona soda. Hold on. I was able to get some Guarana soda at uh, one of my favorite import stores today. It is a delight. If only I could share my delicious Guarana soda with you. I don't even know how to describe the flavor, but it's very good. Also, the fruit itself, guarana, G-U-A-R-A-N-A, -A -A. uh, you should look it up. <laughs> the plant looks so creepy. But it's like, the plant looks like, um eyeballs with like puffy red lids which is kind of hilarious because guarana naturally contains a really high amount of caffeine so it's like the eyes look like they're crashing from all the caffeine or something Caffeine is okay. People, people with like crazy caffeine addictions, uh, as, as long as they calm down, I, I will, will happily make them a cup of coffee. I used to have a bit of a caffeine addiction, mostly through the use of Excedrin for headaches, because that has caffeine in it. Which I took, you know, I take it for headaches. So the problem is, if you make a habit of eating things, even if it's just a pill, or like really caffeinated tea or coffee to treat your headaches, if you stop drinking the caffeine for even a day, the headaches will come back full force, even worse than usual, because you're dependent on the caffeine now. So I try not to use it too much. I just really like Rana soda. And balls, I like ball soda. I don't know if they have either of those where you're from, but... Is it like in Australia or something? I hear imported stuff over there is like crazy expensive. I wonder if there's any imported stuff from Australia in the local places. I think the only thing I've gotten was some like fancy jerky or something. I'm just rambling.
a bowls. It's B A W L S. It comes in these really fun glass jars that are like bumpy. I'm sure I could make a dildo joke about that. Where's Mugen when you need him? But like, uh, uh, there are also some highly caffeinated sodas. And you can like taste the caffeine in them. And I kind of like the bitter taste of the caffeine. With Verona though, it just has, well, I think I could still taste the caffeine a little. But it's mostly just the flavor of the berry. Yeah, B-A-W-L-S, Bowls. It comes in, well, it is actually a Guarana soda. The original flavor of it is Guarana. And then it has orange flavor and cherry and a really good root beer. Heckin' tasty. They have some other flavors that aren't, like, I don't know if they're available in the States, but... Yeah, there's a soda, um, from, it's like a Brazilian brand, and it's called Gorana Antarctica, and it's like from Brazil. And then there's Bowels, which is another Gorana soda. Heckin' really tasty. Sometimes help with my headaches. Or do you mean Ramone? Because Ramone has a weirdly shaped glass bottle and it has a glass, like a little glass marble in it that you have to pop down using the little thing on the top before you can drink it. I love Ramone. I feel like I drew this whole face just a little too far to the left. That's the only one I can think of. Beads of sugar? I have no idea, I never heard of that before. Cause like, you'd think the sugar would dissolve in the liquid, unless it was like so sugary that it was like super saturated and so the, the crystal started to the sugar started to crystallize again? I have no idea. Four bits. Weird.
does like all of his stuff. I like novelty drinks and that kind of thing. Weird. Next. Yeah, why not? I think my internet's stable enough today to not crash. I stopped using my web captioner because it was on Chrome, and I think that really helps. Although I would like to use a web captioner. I gotta find one that is, like, takes up less CPU. funky that is. Quickly disappear two to four sales. <laughs> Nostalgia demand, oh my god. Included to their nearly equal density to surrounding liquid and remain suspended with assistance from an ingredient known as chillin' gum. Chillin' gum provided a support matrix from the like a microscopic spider web and had a visual clarity appearing that of water, which increases the addition of sugar. Oh. They're on open, uh, open bottles. Black currant berry, blueberry melon, strawberry, pineapple, banana, cherry, coconut, raspberry, citrus, vanilla, orange. God damn! I I probably would have loved these things. Extinct beverage taken, raspberry, citrus, orchid. Huh? Bevnet. Fries or bids. That's cool. I love like the aesthetic of them. Oh, of course. Ah, whoops. That's cool though. I like the idea of it. It probably freaks some people out though. Having little little bubbles in their drink. They were ahead of their time. They didn't know how popular things like bubble tea would become. Now we love have little gooey things floating in our drinks. especially for the time range they were produced in. I guess they only showed up in Canada and in like northern states, so I didn't hear about them living down in New Mexico. tasted good. I mean, with those flavor combinations?
is really higher up. <laughs> yeah, they, they look so cool. I would... At the time those were out when I was a kid, if I had seen those in a store, I would be like, oh, oh my god, oh my god, yes, mom, mom, please get me the weird drink. Why did I decide this character always has a tilted smile? I don't trust most, like, most weird Oreos, just because they usually focus on making the cream different. Sometimes the cookie is different, like it'll be like a vanilla cookie or something, but... Although I do kind of like the, the thin, crispy ones, because they have a nice texture, and my favorite ones are the Oreos Bites which a friend got, gave me a bag of once and they're like the only Oreos I care about now because they have way more cookie than cream which I, I like the cookie way better than the cream so those are perfect but besides that it's like I don't, I don't really want like birthday cake or anything that sounds kind of gross I would only try it if it was in like a tiny sample bag you know <laughs> Or if one of my friends got the bag, and we shared it just to try it. a pretty good recipe for um, homemade Oreos because I just wanted the cookies but somehow I managed to make the cookies way too hard they were like bricks but they tasted so good if I can perfect that recipe so I can only have the Oreo cookies oh uh, hey snake cakes if I, can, if I can do that recipe right that would be so good ew <laughs> Yeah, that sounds awful. Thanks for the warning. If someone ever offers me one of those, I'll probably be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Pry off the cookies, throw the cream in the trash. Yeah, it'd be great if I could figure out that one, what I did wrong with that one recipe, because all I, all I want from Oreos are the cookies. I can't, I can't find a way to just get the cookies. It's always, all the focus is on the cream. I understand that it's popular, but come on. Maybe I can just get a whole packet of Oreos, manually remove the cream, and give them to one of my friends who's obsessed with the cream. Just let them eat it with a spoon. Ah, oh, cool. Uh -uh. Scribblio is a good time. I missed it, huh? I think I follow Star Thrill. Star Thrill. What if I keep drawing characters tilting to the left? Is something wrong with my brain? 
be like, oh yeah, that looks fine. Then I'll come back to it and be like, oh no, they're going all left again. Probably from the sheer acidity. <laughs> that is definitely interesting idea. Mixing cola with coffee. Just thinking about it stings my throat, Jesus. Mm, strawberry lemonade. I'm sipping on a guarana soda. Uh, I'm occasionally pressing the soda can against my face because I need to keep icing my face to help my dental surgery recover. I wonder if a guarana soda would freeze up well, because it would make a bitchin' slushy. Yeah, don't do that again. <laughs> Something weird happened chemically there. I tried chocolate cola before and that was pretty good, but I don't know how I feel like about coffee. Mmm, it's the cream sandwich. More curly. Change this character's hair. She used to just have sort of like straight hair, but then I decided I wanted it to be fluffy. So I'm giving her natural hair. Uh, and I have a lot of experience with drawing it. But I want, I want it to be fluffy. Mm, ice cream sandwich and goldfish, and just like throw a juice box in there. Be like a afternoon after school nostalgia bomb for me. And you know, some of the cartoons I used to watch after school, but like food wise. Have any well actually my dad might have a bunch of carrots yeah he usually has like a giant stack of carrots around i don't know what's up with the carrots he's like obsessed with carrots right now it's weird now sub raiders we're talking about snacks and i'm trying to figure out how to draw my own original characters because i never draw them Kira. Just letting y'all know, the reason I'm talking 
um, kind of weird is because I had a bit of a dental surgery like a few days ago. So, um, I'm still recovering from that and my face is a bit weird and I don't have as many teeth as I used to. So that's why I sound a little silly. That's why I sound like that guy from, uh, Red Dragon. No, wait, was it Red Dragon? Wait. You know, that one Hannibal Lecter movie, and also the show. The guy who, got, who, who skinned his face, that guy. That's why I sound like him right now. Hey, Andy. Yeah, usually you go on for a bit longer, huh? Thank you, I'm trying to recover as hard as I can. I'm resting. I'm doing the salt water squishes. I'm holding ice to my face. I'm eating mush. I'm eating so much mush. I immediately got tired of eating mush within like three days. And today, because I'm off of pain meds, I had to go get some really delicious puddings from this uh, Vietnamese place. Like halfway across town. But fucking worth it, dude. If I'm gonna have to eat mush, I wanna eat primo top shelf mush, you know what I mean? That game you were playing looked really cute, it was like Clea or something. Oh my god, I swear I know how to draw this character in profile. Welcome to Jenny's Struggles with a line forever. Let me take a moment to zoom out and see how everything's looking. I still feel like her legs aren't proportioned right. What did I do? Did I get there? Are they too long? I'm having trouble drawing tonight, but what's new? How the hell does anyone manage to draw? I sure as fuck don't know. y'all are doing well in whatever time zones y'all are in. I'm working on these rough sheets for Art Fight, which is, uh, it's like a big art gifting party. You join one of two big teams that are always based on some kind of theme, like coffee versus tea, dreams versus nightmares, that kind of thing. And, um, then on July 1st, uh, the site crashes for like a week while everyone tries to join. And you attack, quote unquote, attack the other players by um, drawing pictures of their OCs. You also have to post references of your OCs so other people can attack them. And um, basically, the, the team who has done the most attacks on the other team at the end wins. I don't really care about winning. I just really like to draw other people's OCs. I draw other people's OCs more than my own. OCs being original characters. I'm sure y'all know that. Yeah, today I was gonna work on um, my Ferberos, my three-headed Furby, uh, but I lost track of time watching Andy stream. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, I don't want to clean my desk off, because it's like a mess. Uh, so I was like, I'll just work on my art fight refs, which I've been working on for like an entire goddamn month. Anyway, 
would like me to take a break so I can show you my Furbies, let me know. Maybe I'll suddenly hit by the ability to draw good when I freaking uh, take a break for a minute, who knows. Is that what it should look like? Oh my god. I could be lazy and give all my OC same face syndrome, but that would be boring. thing I do where I go back and look at everything I've done so far. We got Mentor, we got Lindy, we got Melly, we got the Traveler, we got Cabra, we got Josie, and we have to do Nora, Henri, Charlie, Maureen, Lindy, oh my god. I shouldn't have done this now, I'm just so daunting. Meaty, Milton, Saturnadea, Moth, Historia, and Gregorio. Okay. <laughs> I've still whined so much. But it's still something you like, um. I don't know if you want to keep up the drawing or just drawing cartoon characters is what you're into, but you can sort of use um, what you learn from drawing the cartoon characters to make your own characters, even if it's like a fan OC. I freaking love Courage and Cat Dog. Those were two of my like favorite shows back in the day. Courage is still fantastic. I haven't gone back and watched episodes of Cat Dog in like a long time. Yeah, maybe it's like, I don't know. It can be fun to draw an OC in the style of a show you like. So if you already know some cartoon style, then you can, um, you can like, uh, you know, make like a, a character in that style, or you can make a character in that universe. Make like, I don't know, a, a fox bunny. Merge two other animals together. Make Courage's cousin a brave dog who is very brave and is a ghost hunter. I don't know. I totally support you getting into digital art. It can be a bit of an um a bit of an upfront cost. However, in the long run, a lot of artists like to go with digital art because um cuz like you can pretty much just like uh you know, invest in the upfront stuff and then not have to continuously buy materials. Also, you can experiment a lot with different tools. I super recommend the program I'm using right now. It's called Clip Studio Paint. It's great. Oh yeah, Nickelodeon does have their own streaming service now, huh? They probably have the classics on there. Big these up a little bit so I can focus on the details. Yeah, like, if you get yourself a, a tablet or, you know, like, something that you can draw directly on the screen, you don't even have to go for one of the super expensive ones. I got the one I have now 
for $50 when it's usually like a $120 tablet because I got it refurbished off eBay. And I don't even think it was refurbished. No, it just was, it was used. So the thing is, I don't think it was ever actually used. Like, there's not a mark on it. It's perfect. But it was being sold for half price because it wasn't new. It's the uh, Vig A15. And I love it. And you don't even have to, like, buy a, uh, an art program. There's really good ones out there, like Fire Alpaca. And I think Marcy's using Blender, which is, um, it's Blender, right? Yeah, because that one's free. It's like a whole-ass 3D modeling thing. You can do so much with it. Yeah, if you want to get into drawing, you should you should totally do it. It's hell, but it can also be very fun because you can um, draw really stupid things. Yeah, like um, and also even if you did like if you started with traditional art just to practice. You really don't need fancy equipment. Like, you don't need a really nice $50 sketchbook and, like, fine pencils. You could get, like, a cheap-ass, like, office pen or, like, a 50-pack of pencils for a freaking dollar and, like, a cheap-ass pad of paper and start sketching. Honestly, tracing with your eyes is kind of one of the things they try to teach you. Especially if you're studying from things. Like, studying from life can be really useful even if you're drawing things that are super stylized. So if you're good at just, like, tracing cartoon characters, then you can apply that to other things. I have so much trouble doing studies and, like, copying things that I see. Like, a lot of- there's, like- there's like, you know, things that can help you with drawing, there's things that technically they tell you you could do to better, but no one does them. Like, you're not supposed to draw with just your wrists and fingers, you're supposed to draw with like your whole arm, uh, but no one does that. No one does that. I love seeing things that happen on Blender, where it's like you accidentally press an option and everything gets fucked up. It's so funny. I don't use Blender, but uh, Marcy and Scalaby have been working with Blender recently. It's <laughs> so funny. Yeah, just like, you don't need super nice materials. You can, while you're doing research, if you want to start drawing, you could just get some fucking printer paper. You could get a notebook with wine so that you don't care about how the product comes out and some cheap ass pencils and pens and you can just fucking go for it. Light sources and stuff like that can be difficult to think about. Studying from life can help that a lot. Like, uh, a lot of the classic art things are like, okay, you got your shapes. I used to have a set of plaster shapes, but I donated them to an art class. You got, you know, the shapes. And then you have a light source. Say the light source is coming from this direction. So... Your shadow is going to follow the, the shape of the thing. You know, it's gonna get bigger when the shape gets bigger, etc. This whole plane of the cube is gonna be dark. There's also the core shadow, which is like the darkest part of the shadow. On, on, on cubes, it's like the edge. And then there's like the highlight, which is like, you know, the shiny part cubes it's like usually on the edges or on the top and then there's reflected light which is light that bounces off of the surrounding surface and onto the back of the item so you'll have like a little area back here that'll be just ever so slightly lighter than the shadow you know that kind of thing it's like a if you just i don't know if you have like a ball that's like one color or like a cube or like a box a cardboard box or some shit Put it in front of a lamp and just like look 
for look for the shadow, which is, you know, it's the shadow. You can walk it out. Oh, hell yeah, Coheed. I like Coheed and Cambria. Plastic tabletop and Sharky, fuck yeah. Oh yeah, the leg, I remember that. Yeah, like, shading is like, you look for the shadow, you look for the core shadow, which is the darkest part of the shadow and is usually closer to the middle of the object than you might think. And there's the highlight, which is the shiny part of the shadow. I mean, the sh shiny part of the object. And there's the reflected light, which is, if, the, if it's, unless it's in a completely dark room, the object you're drawing, unless it's in a completely dark room, you're probably going to get some reflected light, and just adding a touch of reflected light or edge lighting to something can help so much. And also, everything is made out of these shapes. Like, almost everything. Most things are made out of these shapes. You just gotta put them together. Yeah, like, there's a whole ass, uh... There's, like, whole tutorials on it that you can find pretty easily online. You just have to look up, like, Shading a cube. Shading a sphere. Shading a cone. And once you sort of learn how to look for the shadow, the core shadow, the highlight, and the reflected light, you can sort of start envisioning how to do things. Like, this character, if we have a light coming from here again, from sort of a three-quarters angle, then, you know, her face is gonna curve like this, it's gonna go around the eye, it's gonna go around the cheek, and sort of that, that's, that's your shadow. Kinda messy, but whatever. Same with the hair. And with the neck. Oh, and cast shadows. I didn't mention cast shadows, but duh. If there's like a, a big thing here, it's gonna cast a shadow on our character. The character's hair is gonna cast a shadow on her brow. Uh, you know, like in anime, it's very common to just have like a little, um, boop. You know, like that, because of the chin, it's casting a shadow on the neck. So, yeah, it's like, it's really simple when you break it down, but keeping it all in your head and using it to shade more complex items can get sort of confusing, but if you break everything into shapes, it sort of gets a little bit easier. I'm definitely not like a master at it. Just sharing like basic stuff that I learned of a one semester of art school I went to. But, like, I don't know, say cat dog. You have a tube, which is a cylinder, and then you got its little cylinder legs. It's gonna be the worst cat dog you've ever seen. And you got you got its stupid head. This looks awful. And it's ears and then a big bulbous nose. Okay. This is the most perfect cat dog I've ever drawn in my life. So you know, maybe the underside is shaded. Now the the top of this. Around the head, the legs. One of the legs might be in shadow completely because it is the body is casting a shadow onto it, you know? Like the back legs. It's a really popular cheat that I see uh, some artists use where they'll just make like the character stepping forward and the back leg will be completely in shadow so that it looks like really dramatic, even if it makes no sense with the lighting. But it, it always looks cool. See, so yeah, like, Actually, if you, yeah, if you break down the cartoon characters you draw into those simple shapes and, you know, just sort of think about it like that, then you could get to doing more complex shapes as well. Don't ask me how colors work, however. I have not studied color theory. I'm so bad at colors. I'm trash at contrast. I just wing it until it looks okay. Artist hack, wing it until it looks okay. <laughs> yeah, this has been uh very fast, very fast certain art basics. Oh, one, one more thing as long as I'm rambling, because I like to encourage people to, to do, to do art if they want to, and especially drawing, because it's like one of the few ones I know how to do. Good night, Kira, I hope you have, I hope you have a good time sleeping. 
I hope you are comfortable all through the night and don't have to wake up and adjust your adjust your covers because it's too cold or too hot. And you get to wake up exactly when you want to. Good night. One last thing though, gesture drawings. Do gesture drawings. They help so much. If anyone needs some links to some easy gesture drawing tools, let me know. I won't keep you up explaining what those are, you can look it up yourself, but... Have a good night, y'all. <laughs> I don't even know character design theory that well. I'd have to pull out some of um, the how to think when you draw books that I have. No prob. It's, oh geez, it's already almost one, but I'm gonna try to get a few lines on here. I usually sign off at one my time. I gotta try to make this character's shoulders make sense and then I gotta sign off, but good night y'all. Okay. Yeah, gesture drawing for anyone still here who wants to hear me lispily rant about stuff. Hmm. It's like a... You'll look, you'll look at a, like a, a human subject or an animal or an insect or whatever you're trying to draw. And let's say they're jumping up in the air and doing a cool kick or something. You don't have to very carefully draw out the entire person, you just go like, okay, here's their head, here's their torso, they're doing a kick, here's their foot, and you get the, yeah, cool, cool action pose, yeah, like that, that's basically a gesture drawing. This is a really quick gesture drawing. The farther you go, like, the more time you spend on it, you, uh, you can put more detail in. It's basically just studying from life, but you're trying to get the movement, like you're doing someone, I don't know, stretching or something. Go, there's the head, there's the torso, there's the pelvis, and they're, they're doing a big stretch, and they're yawning. Bleh. That's someone stretching. You know, it's that kind of thing. You study from life, but in a very quick and messy way so that you understand the motion and how the parts of the body go together. And that's how you can, it, it really helps if you want to draw some like dancing or action-y poses or even just someone doing something basic like sitting down on a Okay, is anyone still here? Okay, there's a few people here. I'm gonna see if there's anyone else I can send you off to. Let that load back up. familiar with that name. Obari? Oh, Obari we call the cord pose. Do you mean someone like going like you got like their head on their head or something? Is that, is that it? I've seen this in anime before. You know, they're sort of, you know, they're doing a little thrust. Is that it? fun person to watch. I, I watch a lot of art YouTubers. I need to find more art streamers, so I follow a few. I was watching Super Sky earlier. She's great. I wonder if she's still on? If Super, St if Super Sky is still on, I'm gonna raid her. Okay, I think she's signed off. Okay, Letterbag's on playing Monster Hunter Stories. If anyone has a, a preference for where I send you, let me know. Letterbag also does art. Okay, cool.
Price VA is playing uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Nell Hex is also playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Tart's on playing ESO, which I'm probably going to drop drop into for a few hours. Myself, Dama, Dama is playing Subnautica Below Zero, the new Subnautica game. We got Imagine Our Baldur's Gate World's End Club. Lacentia is on playing Stardew Valley. Nady Kicks is on doing pixel art. And we got more ESO. Does, does anyone have a preference? Marcy, do you have a preference? Anyone? Every time I every time I raid Dama, she's like about to head off. Maybe I'll go bother one of these two playing. Maybe I'll just go bother Letterbug. I don't think I've even raided him yet. been on I wonder. Okay, it looks like he's still in the middle of playing. I know Marcera is like Monster Hunter, so I don't know. At least one person in chat likes Monster Hunter. Here you go. 